<laughs> That's Gerald's rubber duck. Yeah, and Shell made this with me. And basically, Shell's, Shell's whole con uh, creation of the sets has been off a little drawing or a uh, concept piece that we've done, and the rest has been all her. All her, and, and she, she's great at it. She's really did an awesome job. Went down to Home Depot and put it together. That's been really fun to figure out. Yeah. yeah. Really fun challenges. And that's the adopter. That's the guy that in the end might <coughs> oh, <you laughs> walk away with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, that's where we are in the film. We're right at the bit where where he uh, he's gonna come in and check out Gerald. Yeah. Very cool. What kind of lights are you using? What kind of what? Light. Lights. Uh, we have the, hmm. the mini moles. We have a big. Uh, we have three of those basically that have been a part of the set interior and the uh, or the cage interior, and then a little bit in the hallway. Otherwise, they're they're bargain basement. I think they call these MR 11s that you get at Target. And this is a Target, and this is a Home Depot, and that's it. Yeah. We've done all the lighting ourselves except for one piece, which we had a person help us from, um, from Robot Chicken. All three she was actually really helpful. She gave us a whole list of um, yeah. things to get. Like, and gels. And uh, yeah, gel. she gave us a ton of gels too, but like um, clothes... Clothes pants. <laughs> yeah, they have a name for that too. Clips. It's like MR16 oh, yeah, or they've something got like that. Crazy names. She told us a bunch of lighting lingo too, which we immediately yeah. forgot. <laughs> C-47s. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that's it. C-47s. That's, that's it. Basically, I have, I use a program called Monkey Jam, which is a free program. Uh, that was the first one I found online when I, when I just started doing experiments with a webcam. And um, it, it's just, a, I have a, a spy cam, basically, that I, I made this little gadget for that gives me a live view that goes to my um, monkey jam and then I just take digital pictures with Nikon Capture with the Nikon D70 that I got uh, information about basically online at stopmotionanimation.com and through talking to Nick Hillengoss he gave me a lot of good information about lenses and stuff like that but it's really straightforward I, I in order to avoid flicker I, I unscrew the cap to the the little circle-y thing there basically stops down and it keeps the flicker from coming and I uh, I just click away. It's really straightforward. I, I on my next situation, I'm going to use a, a an animation lunchbox because I'm using something similar to that at the Mythic Journeys that I'm on right now. It's super helpful to really polishing your animation. And right now, I'm doing basically 20, 30, 40 frames before I even view it. So I'm moving straight ahead. And then I see what I've done, uh, and by using the lunchbox, I can watch my timing per frame and it's going to be so helpful to getting really clean timing instead of planning it out like I do on paper. Let's see here, if I got one of these trading dialogues. Worms, mage, rabies, who knows? Basically, uh, it's a shot where he, the Gerald, is, is acting a certain way and they don't understand, they're like, what's wrong with this dog, you know? And he just is, he's making, she's like, well, what's wrong with it? And he's like, well, maybe worms. Worms, mange, rabies, who knows? That's the little clip. <laughs> but uh, it's simple, Nikon camera. Spy cam for my live view. Um, lights are incredibly target action. Um... Just animation, man. Planning, planning out my shots and stuff like that. Basically, I'll get a. Usually, what we do is we go down in the hole, which you guys will see later, the gymnasium, and we act out the shots. I basically talk to Shell back and forth, and we kind of say, "What are we trying to get across in this shot?" And then I do my performance in front of her. Usually, I act it out on the floor. I'll either pretend to be a dog, or I'll pretend to be a rich guy, or a tough guy, or something like that. And then Shell will critique it, and then maybe she'll act it out for me, so then I can watch it physically and then usually I go back to my office or I'll, or I'll, uh, I'll have a record me so I can watch myself and look at myself and then I'll draw out the poses and then I usually time it out on paper like what kind of timing I want to have and I usually come in with a, 
a sheet, which I can show you guys more in my office, but I usually have just little thumbnails of, of everything and how many frames I'm holding. And, and then I, uh, I basically animate. After I've done my, if I have a dialogue piece, I'll use Magpie to, to break down the, the phonemes and then I just animate. Yeah. And she's super helpful with my acting. So. <laughs> and it's cool. Very Basically, nice. when we started having some nasty flicker issues at some point, and we were trying to figure out how we were going to fix it, we were recommended a voltage regulator. This so, is where the stop motion community online yeah, came in again. And helped totally us again. We got this handy dandy voltage o o Which matic. I wired together. Yes, she did. Which She's is very that, exciting. So. <laughs> and basically, I would figure out where I was going to be, which was usually about 120, and um, I would get it to where I want the lights, check out on my camera view before I even start my shot, so I'd usually set up the focus, set up the aperture or anything like that. And then uh, per frame, basically after, if I had a shot with that, I would adjust this to keep it within, you know, 0.5 of, of whatever the original number was, and it basically eliminated flicker. So it was really handy, and it also is really cool because it turns all the lights on in one all flick. in one flick. Because we've got all these crazy wires everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you know, sometimes I I forgot to turn on a wire or a oh, light. Like, Damn it! The whole shots. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. So where'd you get the regulator from? Where'd you order it from? Online, eBay. eBay. We found it on eBay. You can find them pretty cheap. There's a lot of like music stuff. Hmm. That uh, is out there, and and I think it was like 120 bucks or something like that, brand new. So there's there's cheaper ones even if they're used. So yeah, cool. And the film is low budget, <laughs> <laughs> low budget, but but we did spend money. We basically invested in a camera. We invested in this flickageizer. The set pieces, like basic wood, we, we, um, and basic like molding supplies, blender, oven. I think the oven was like thirty-five bucks or something. It was like really that. cheap. The blender Super was ten. Cheap. So like yeah. Craigslist is is like was, the garage you can do best it. friend. You can really do it. And uh, the thing we spent the most money on are, are, were the lights, lights, the lights, and the camera, and yeah. the computer. We bought yeah. The computer. Yeah. It was like uh, fifteen hundred bucks for the three lights or something like that. And, and that was probably the biggest yeah, expense. But it was well worth it because we use them all the time. We're going to use them on all our future yeah, projects. Yeah, next, next projects. Exactly. So we thought of it as studio investment. So. Nice. <laughs> Let's see. <I'm> Aiden. <laughs> Here's some mouths. Yeah, you can see we use a lot of the stick on mouth shapes. I, I kind of got that from the moral oral. Uh, background of things. With the mouth sheets, did you c cut them out yourself or did you? Uh, no, you know what, I, I made them in a program uh, and then I took them and and hey, took them to a printer. But basically I have a magpie paper which is, uh, it has all the letters, all the moments, and then I usually time it all out here with the poses. But, you know, all the statements are right here. Just printed out a magpie. Basic. So I usually do two parts on every shot. The dope sheet and then the poses. And timing. And I usually, another little tip, something when I'm working out storyboards at first, usually one of the things I started doing was I just did really rough uh, post-it note storyboards so I could swap them around and, and uh, you know, try different things and, and see it in sequence. And it really helped a lot in, in getting my final storyboards together. You can also see some of the poses here and stuff when I was doing a few of the scenes. So those were your pre-storyboards? Yeah, these are my pre-storyboards, exactly. You can see a sequence here where the, the doggy was rolling around acting cute and chasing his tail and stuff like that. You can see it's all there. It's the same stuff that ended up in the film. Puppies!